everyone. Thank you so much for joining me and visiting with me in Liz at Home. I'm going to do a watercolour in this Rainforest Escape by Jane Gideon today. Um, I've decided, in case you feel like trying to paint along with me, I just want to show you my materials. The most important is my cup of tea. Just let me get that out of the way. So I'm going to do this image. Um, I want to try an effect of doing water droplets on the leaf with watercolour. I've never done it before, so we'll see how it lights up. And the hummingbird, um, of course, we can use some really pretty colours. I'm not sure what these fruit are. I've seen other pictures done and they all appear to be red. So I'm going to do this in an orange or a red, these fruit. But as I say, I'm not entirely sure what they are. So if you happen to know, please drop me a line in the comments. This is the fruit. This appears to be the bark of the tree and then the big leaves. And these look a little bit like fuchsia plants. So I'm going to sort of look at that kind of color scheme. I must admit, being me, I've not planned a color scheme. I just tend to dive into things and often regret it halfway through. But I didn't feel like planning a color scheme. So as you know, this is watercolor paper. And I'm just going to go through the materials I'm going to be using. So it's this book, then some sheets of paper. I have to try and find one that's reasonably clean to put at the back, just to protect the underlying pages. I do need to slide them down because I don't want um, I don't want the edge to come through. Then I have a saucer, just an old ceramic plate to mix colours with. I've brought two um, paint palettes with me. This is the Prima Woodlands paint palette. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to... I like that green, so it's kind of where I went. And that's quite a pretty blue for the sky or whatever to mix with. And then I brought along this Dale Arani Aquafine palette that I've got. Um, these paints tend to uh, stick to the... They get up. They, there's so much paint on that, but this has got very basic colors, so you can mix quite nice colors. And nice, I thought I might even use um, like the purple or the alizarin crimson mix with that for this thing. I'm still not sure. I might even make it an orangey brown. I'll see when I get to it. But so, also using that palette. Then I have various brushes here. So. For the background, I'll tell you what I'm using when I use it. But my main brush will probably be this Crafter Mo number no. 7. I might use the smaller Crafter Mo number no. 2. Craft Ammo, Craft Ammo, I'm not sure. And another one of my favorite brushes to use is this. It's a finesse round. And another brush that I may very well use, this is just a Winsor & Newton Cotman double zero, just with a very fine tip if I want to do little things like that. So, without further ado, I'm going to get started. And because, as you know, oh, I also have two vessels of water. One will I'll keep clean for a final rinse or for mixing colors or something and one to rinse my brush in and then some paper towel always have some paper towel I'm going to go I also have a cloth here so just to get rid of extra excess water etc etc so as you know I tend to struggle to talk while I'm doing something so I'm going to get a move on and paint and then I'll do a voiceover when that's finished. I hope it turns out nicely. We'll see. One other thing I've done is I've just taken this, it's a 
for a bind. Uh, it's just a plastic sheet to put on the facing page where I'll put my saucer so that I don't mess too much water on that. So now we're ready to begin and I'm going to start with these De La Rami Aquafine pens and I've just sprayed them with a little bit of water to get them activated and I have my vessel of water and I'm going to mix up a little bit of green so I just want to clear away the book so that I don't splash water all over it. Do excuse the state of my craft mat, it's had so many things thrown at it. So I'm, in case you're not used to watercolour, I wet the brush first and then I add water to the pan, um, the colour that I'm using and put that on the saucer and I mix that up a few times with water and with filming I need to kind of keep in mind that I'm not pushing my arm over the camera all the time so I apologize for bits that happen like that and I'm trying to get quite a bit of paint onto the saucer this is a very bright green and it's a little bit too bright for what I want the name of this is leaf green and then I mix that with a little bit of sap green which is a slightly more olive dull color but so it's not just the dull, it's got the bright of the leaf green in it. And I mix those two together. And then I'm clearing a bit of the water off my brush and adding a little bit of vermilion hue. Now, red and green are opposite each other on the color wheel. So when you add something that's opposite, you would eventually make a brown, but what the effect of that is, is dulling down the very bright green, which is why I quite like mixing colors rather than just using a particular color. I find you get more unique colors and more what you would like. So now opening my page to where it needs to be. I hope that I get myself nicely in screen. I'm just trying to get it all centered so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to start with this big leaf and I'm planning on using what is called the wet on wet or the wet in wet technique. I call it wet on wet. Most of the books I've read call it wet on wet. And you do that particularly in watercolor paper um, because it has the ability to withstand the, the wetness and it also has a little bit of sizing on it which stops the the water immediately soaking up and gives a bit of a water film. So now I'm using clean water on this leaf and painting it on and I want to cover the whole leaf with the clean water and I want it to remain wet but not sopping. I've just switched my other light on so that you can actually see the shine of the water and I like to be able to see that shine to be able to tell where the water, where the paper is actually wet and shiny. So now with that leaf wet, one's got to work quite quickly. I can see the patches that are already dry. I'm adding quite a watered down solution <laughs> or whatever of this green paint that I mixed and covering the whole leaf with that. And I want to work quite quickly because I want to drop in darker colors as well so that it's not just the one flat color. I apologize for my head poking into the picture every here and there. I forget that the camera's going to pick my hair up. And so I, I don't see very well. I have very bad eyesight and I often need to peer just about onto the page to figure out what's going on. So what happens also with watercolor is that water likes water so it tends to flow into the 
places that are wet and then you get nice soft edges uh, whereas to the dry bits it won't flow so much so now it's quite although it's winter here it's quite dry here at the moment and the paper is drying faster than I would like but I want to now use a darker green to go down the middle and I'm using the um, I think I'm using Viridian Hue there and I'm mixing that again with some of the sap green just to kind of dull it down a little bit and blend the two together and then I take that paint that down the middle um, my desire was for it to start inching out which is what normally happens on good watercolor paper when you have a wet on wet technique but this was not wet enough still so it didn't so I did something else which I'll show you to just try and encourage the two colors together so it's different when I'm doing watercolor um, especially something abstract I can just I love the play of the paint wet on wet technique and I wish my head was not poking into the picture all the time <laughs> still so now I'm washing off my brush and drying it off slightly on the paper towel and then going over the edges of that wet area to try and let the edges blend in and then I want to choose my brush is not wet it's just damp sort of blend the two together like this and now I want to do the other side it's a, a balancing act of getting the paper and everything just wet enough and when that doesn't work then trying to use other ideas to get them to to blend together you'll see that I've mostly left the little edges of the leaf unpainted and my plan is to go over with quite a thick mixture of paint when everything's dry and just painting those edges I'm trying to with a damp brush bring this out a little bit more didn't quite do what I wanted so I'm wet the brush a bit more and then bringing the two sides together and now painting a little bit more of the dark down the center so I don't want just a line there double try the damp brush technique again just slowly building up layers the page is not completely dry yet but it's not as wet as I needed it to be so you can see the reason one has the paper towel it's very handy now I'm trying painting the dampness into that so it bleeds out a bit still didn't quite give me the effect I wanted did the same now of pulling the edges in that is working better but I'm not getting the middle section to do what I wanted it to do trying to go in the in the the direction that the lines have been drawn and so I decide I'm going to mix up a little bit more of the sap green and bring that in because I was not getting exactly what I wanted so adding water to the paint here and then going over everything and it is now starting to come together so you can see the brighter edge is now blending into all of this 
So I hope this is making sense to you. <laughs> and when you do it, it will look completely different. That's the thing with watercolors. They tend to do everything depends on how much water and temperature, humidity, all sorts of things like that have a lot of um, bearing on the result that you get. So I'm a little bit worried that this video is going to be too long. So I'm going to end this here and this will be part one. And I think it will end up having probably three or four parts to this. I'm going to call it a color along and you're welcome to color along. You don't have to do what I'm doing. You're very welcome to color this with water-based markers or water brush pens or whatever you like and then just join me while we're doing this and um, maybe I'll get to see what you've done. Can you see the shine on the page there now because it's had so much water and that is now starting to bleed out a little bit more the way I want it. I'm determined to get my edges. <laughs> looks like I've dropped some splotches on that other leaf which I didn't even notice while I was doing it. But so this is very wet and then we needed to leave it to dry. So I'd like to say thanks very much for joining me for this video and I'll upload the next one tomorrow so that you can see it immediately. Thanks so much for watching and have a colorful day. Bye bye now.